So I'll begin by saying I'm very happy to be here in order to address you. Although the title of the conference is a little ambiguous for people like me. The two partners who seem to be in dialogue here are Messianic Jews and Christians. As someone who identifies himself as a Jewish Catholic, I'm not sure where I fit in. But I suppose that that is an important part of the theological and theoretical discussion and not just a personal question of identity. One other preliminary comment is that I'm aware that speaking about Catholics gives the wrong impression that all the Jews in the church within the body of Christ are Catholics, and that would be to ignore the very important individuals and communities that do exist within the Orthodox and Eastern churches, as well as in other ecclesial communities issuing from the Reform and among the Evangelicals. Definitions, Richard already began. Among the many aspects of the reorientation of the Catholic Church's discourse with regard to Jews and Judaism after the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s, one can also mention the change that has taken place in past decades with regard to the Catholic Church's position on the Jewish identity of those Jews who have become Catholics. In former times, a baptized Jew was characterized as an ex-Jew, having given up his or her Jewish identity at the baptismal font. Jews were now Catholics, and Jewish identity was to be discarded. However, in our times, Jews who are baptized into the Catholic Church can not only retain their Jewish identity, but indeed celebrate it. Pope John Paul II described emblematic Jewish Catholic Edith Stein in 1987 in his address to the Jewish community in Cologne as a daughter of Israel who remained, remained united as a Catholic with Jesus and as a Jew with her people. In his homily pronounced for Stein's canonization in 1998, John Paul II declared, she understood that it was very important for her to be a daughter of the chosen people and to belong to Christ, not only spiritually, but also through blood. Although there are few Catholics who are Jews, the group is a very diverse one. From an institutional point of view, the two best known structures that regroup Jews who are Catholics are the St. James Vicariate for Hebrew-speaking Catholics in Israel, known popularly as the Kihila, and the Association of Hebrew Catholics, henceforth the AHC, active predominantly in the Anglophone Jewish diaspora. Interestingly, among the founding figures of both structures are two Jewish Catholics who were Carmelites in the monastery of Stella Maris in Haifa, Daniel Oswald Rufheisen and Elias John Friedman. The differences in perspective that characterize these two emblematic figures reveals the great diversity to be found among Jewish Catholics. This diversity imposes itself even on the choice of terminology. Hebrew-speaking Catholic or Hebrew Catholic, I myself will pre prefer the use of Jewish Catholic, and I hope the distinctions will become clear in what follows. Whereas today the Catholic Church celebrates the Jewish identity of Jewish Catholics, like all other Jews, they themselves are constantly dealing with the dilemma of what it means to be a Jew today. A Jew, according to religious law, is the child of a Jewish mother or someone who converts to Judaism. Is being Jewish today primarily a religious reality or is it a national, cultural, ethnic reality? 
it would be undoubtedly true to speak of the Jewish people as a religious reality up to the beginning of modernity. Then, halacha, Jewish religious practice, defined Jewish identity. However, modernity not only shattered the unity of practice at the heart of traditional Jewish identity through the emergence of different streams of Judaism, ultra-Orthodoxy, modern Orthodoxy, conservative Judaism, reform Judaism, etc., but also gave birth to a Jewish secular rejection of traditional religious practice altogether. <coughs> However, can one claim to be Jewish when one practices another religion? This was, of course, the claim of Rufheisen in his process brought before the Supreme Court in Israel in the early 1960s. Whether there is, whereas there is little agreement among Jews today as to what constitutes a Jew, I suggest that two important elements in the identity of the contemporary Jew have emerged. A sense of peoplehood, <coughs> uh, Mark, I made a mistake, I do need the water. So first, a sense of peoplehood, and second, a sense of shared history. These two elements are more decisive than religion in unifying Jews today when the majority of Jews do not practice any form of traditional religion. Whereas the element of Torah was at the core of identity in former times, today the concepts of Am, people, and Eretz, land, have largely overshadowed Torah. Among Jewish Catholics, there are a few who keep aspects of halachic Jewish life, Shabbat, Kashrut, etc. However, the vast majority of those who claim their Jewish identity do so in a modern sense. If a secular Jew who practices little or nothing of Jewish tradition can be Jewish, why can't I? <coughs> Jewish in the church. Be this as it may, what does it mean to be Jewish in the church today? What is the status of a Jewish Catholic as a Jew? I would assume that no Catholic would have a problem with a Jewish Catholic who insists on his or her national, ethnic, sociological, or cultural Jewish identity. Both Rufhazen and Friedman were strongly Zionist, seeing the state of Israel as a new period in Jewish history that could open Jews, secure in their state, to Christians and Christianity. They did have different reasons, though, of what it meant to be Jewish in the church. On the one hand, Rufhazen and other founders of the Kihila believed that they were re-establishing re the ancient church of the circumcision the community of St. James in Jerusalem, a community of Jews who believe in Jesus without ceasing to be Jews. For example, Rufhazen commented, for me, the acceptance of Christianity was a Jewish step. He would insist that his move towards Jesus as Messiah was steeped in his Jewish identity, a move similar to the earliest Jewish disciples of Jesus, from a theological point of view, the founders of the Kihila wanted the expression of their faith in Jesus as Messiah to be Jewish, not only deeply rooted in the scriptures of Israel, but also formulated in the expressions of the Jewish people through the centuries, and thus at home in the Hebrew language, in a society in which the majority were Jews, and in a state that defined itself as Jewish. What brings the faithful of the Kila together is their shared use of that Hebrew language and their being home, being at home in Jewish society. This is a rather secular and modern sense 
of being Jewish. On the other hand, Friedman insisted that the Hebrew Catholic was an Israelite, a member of the people of Israel. However, Jewish tradition, practice, and belief based on Jewish religion and unenlightened by the revelation of Christ were no longer appropriate for the Hebrew Catholic. He wrote in his 1987 opus, Jewish Identity, an Israelite who today accedes to the Christian faith is not a Judeo-Christian. Not only did Judeo-Christians frequent the synagogue until their expulsion from it in the year 80 of the Christian era, they believed that the law of Moses was still valid. End of cite, uh, quotation of Friedman. According to this view, vestiges of Jewish culture should only be retained in order to encourage Jews to convert without the fear of losing their specific national identity. Sabbath observance or the Passover meal might be practiced within the Catholic context by Catholics of Jewish origin in order to express their Israelite, Israelite identity. In an interview published in 2010 with the patron of the association, Cardinal Archbishop Raymond Burke, Burke clarified that traditional Jewish practices are permitted because they are carried out in the light of Christ. The interview strongly underlines that baptized Hebrew Catholics remain part of God's elect, holding a special place as heirs of historical Israel. There is, however, no word in the long interview on the status of Jews who do not believe in Christ. However, the flyer that describes the AHC on their website states, the tragic exile of post-Christic Jewry was due to their incredulity, their refusal to acknowledge the divinity of Jesus. This thought should prompt Hebrew Catholics to redress the situation by their exemplary orthodoxy orthodoxy in Catholic faith and practice. Catholic in Israel, in the Jewish people, when Jewish Catholics live in the midst of Jewish society, whether in Israel or in the diaspora, what is their relationship with their Jewish brothers and sisters who do not accept belief in Jesus as Messiah? Again, our emblematic use of the two Stellamaris Carmelites characterizes, or perhaps characterizes diversity. Rufhazen and the founders of the Kihila encouraged a relationship of dialogue with Jews, including religious Jews, and did not engage in any form of missionary activity. In this spirit, in recent years, a twinning has taken place between the Kihila, the Hebrew-speaking community, and a synagogue community in Jerusalem. Kehilat Zion, that includes not only social action together, but also study of scripture. Members of the two Kehilot frequent each other's liturgical worship without syncretism, but in a spirit of respect and dialogue. A similar fraternizing, although less frequent, was established between the Kehilah in Beersheba and a local synagogue. Undoubtedly, this dialogue is facilitated by the fact that the Kihila presents itself as a Catholic community that speaks Hebrew rather than as a Jewish Catholic community. The Kihila has tended to underline the traumatic relations between Jews and Christians through the centuries, recognizing that mission in any form is part of the problem. It seeks to incarnate a loving presence of church in the midst of the people of Israel. On its website, the Kihila is described as working, and I quote, to strengthen the relationship between Jews and Christians, sharpening the church's awareness of its Jewish roots and of the Jewish identity of Jesus and his apostles 
and seeking to sharpen the awareness of Jews in Israel with regard to the history, teaching, and contribution of the church to society. The website continues, our faithful are engaged fully in the life of Israeli Jewish society and in the life of the Catholic Church. This loving presence is one in which ideally Jews would not feel threatened by proselytizing efforts, but feel at home and recognize the Jewish, Hebrew, and Israeli contours of the Kihila. As formulated in the pastoral letter published to mark the 60th anniversary of the Kihila, and I quote, when questioned about our faith, the words of Peter can serve us as a guide. Reverence the Lord Jesus Christ in your hearts and always have your answer ready for people who ask the reasons for, your, for the hope that you all have, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Witness replaces mission and implies dialogue within the Kihila. On the other hand, the AHC, although also avoiding the word mission, uses the word witness as a synonym for mission. The opening statement on its website states, if you are a Catholic, we hope that you will be motivated to learn more and to collaborate with us in this work. If you are of Jewish origin, we hope you will join us in providing a collective witness of Jewish people to Jesus and his church. The collective witness is that of Jews speaking to Jews about Christ and encouraging them to join the fold, a traditionally missionary approach. A new voice has appeared in this debate. Antoine Levy, who we will hear during these days, with his magnum opus Jewish Church, a Catholic approach to Messianic Judaism. In this volume, Levy engages with the Messianic Jewish theologian Mark Kinzer, arguing for the integration of Messianic Judaism into the Catholic Church in order to gain not only Catholicity for the Church, not only Gentiles but Jews too, but universality for the Jews, not only Jews but Gentiles too. As Levy writes, and I quote, a messianic Jew in the denominational sense of the term is a member of a movement that will not find its fully Catholic realization as long as this movement subsists independently from the wider church. A Catholic Jew, or a Christian Orthodox Jew for that matter, is a member of a church that is still far from her fully messianic accomplishment because its Jewish component is still insufficiently manifested. Levy's description of the Jewish church he envisages resonates to some degree with the ideas of the AHC, reserved about rabbinic tradition, even if rooted in the Jewish people, particularly defined by nationalism. He writes, and I quote, the qualitative leap that proceeds from the revelation of Christ cannot but draw Messianic Judaism outside of the traditional setting of the synagogue. The truth is that if Jewish disciples cannot be disciples of Yeshua in the same manner as their, Christ, as their Gentile brethren because they are Jewish, they cannot either be religiously Jewish in the same manner as their Jewish brethren because they are disciples of Yeshua. Conclusion. At the end of this paper, I offer a personal reflection. As a Jewish Catholic, I cultivate myself, and I believe others do as well, a dual belonging to the church and to the Jewish people. I am not satisfied with simply being a Hebrew-speaking Catholic. I love the Hebrew language that I have intentionally adopted and made my own. However, I personally am not a Zionist and Jewish nationalism neither corresponds to how I understand the vocation of the Jewish people nor 
to the teaching of the Catholic Church. At the same time, I am not a Hebrew Catholic as I seek to understand Judaism from the perspective of religious Jews who do not believe in Jesus, believing that they have much to teach the church religiously and spiritually. I am a Jewish Catholic affirming that my identity is a double one. I feel at home not only among the Jewish people, but in their synagogues too. The religious language, liturgy, and feasts are part of my heritage, a heritage I ignored before becoming a Catholic and which I discovered as a Catholic. I feel at home in the Catholic Church where I discovered not only Jesus the Messiah, but also his father, the God of Israel. It is clear that feeling at home in the church and in the synagogue means I am sometimes suspect in both, but that is a privilege rather than a burden. <laughs> Perhaps I would have been burnt at the stake as a Judaizer in centuries gone by, or expelled from the synagogue as belonging to one of the minim, in this vocation, I know that I'm not alone. I do not seek to combine Judaism and Christianity into a comfortable syncretism. Rather, I seek to preserve communion with my people in their vocation and destiny. At the same time, I seek to follow Jesus within the Catholic Church. In the post-concilia Catholic Church, teaching seems to propose that we are called and I stress this, to await the day known to God alone when Jews and Christians will converge, becoming one united people of God. I believe that we who are Jewish Catholics are invited to be silent signs of that long-awaited eschatological conversions. I quote, both from the prophet Zephaniah and from Vatican II, in company with the prophets and the same apostle, the church awaits that day known to God alone in which all peoples will address the Lord in a single voice and serve him shoulder to shoulder. Thank you. <laughs>